Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So today we're out in the garden and we're going to be trying this. Uh, this is a GOES parabolic reflector antenna, well designed for GOES by the company Neuralek. Now this has a gain of around 21 dBi. The center frequency is 1.75 gigahertz and has a bandwidth of around 200 megahertz or greater. Now I can't get goes from here from the UK because the elevation is just far too low. I'm kind of central UK, maybe sort of the uh, west coast of the UK you may be able to get goes, but here in the center it's not really an option unless you're really high ground. Now today I'm going to be trying this with Inmarsat and Inmarsat is around 1.5 gigahertz so it should work perfectly well with that. I am going to use an LNA in line and a Sawbird filter all in one connected to the antenna and then off to the SDR. So the antenna itself comes as a kit, the two parabolic dish parts are actually split down the middle and you have to actually connect them or bolt them up including the centre boom and this little plate here as well. You just attach it on with two screws. The tripod stand that you can see here, that didn't come with it. That's uh, part of a, another satellite kit that I had and that's just bolted on like so. Now when it comes to adjusting for elevation, you can either have it on these fixed points, you change the U-bolt so it's between here and one of these steps, which I could have done, or you can have it on this free one if you move the U-bolt to the uh, inner hole here and then you have it free and you just adjust it up and down and that changes the elevation obviously you have to play around with the location that will suit your needs so if we go back inside we have a look on the laptop hopefully it should be working and receiving stuff receiving a cars from Inmarsat seems to work very well with nice strong signals now if we take a quick scan across the band from about 1.5 gigahertz up to around 1.55 gigahertz, we come across lots of nice strong signals. As well as ACARs, we can also decode maritime safety information from the NCS channels. Now these messages take a while to decode as each message is sent in chunks from the Inmarsat satellite. Now while sitting here in the conservatory with the laptop connected to the SDR via a long USB cable, I was thinking of a way I can use this antenna from my shack indoors. Now as Inmarsat is south from me, the house blocks the signal to the dish unless I put the dish right at the end of the garden. Now I have power and an ethernet connection coming into the conservatory from the house. So the most logical solution would be to use Spy Server from AirSpy. Now it's a free download from the AirSpy website and it's super simple to get working. Now normally I would grab a Raspberry Pi for this kind of solution, but I recently received this mini PC. Now this is called an M10 from a company called Morphine, and it runs an Intel Older Lake N100 processor. Now memory is 16 gigabytes of DDR5. You can choose an NVMe SSD size of between 128 gigabytes up to one terabyte. Now I think this version that I have is 512 gigabyte version, but I'm not entirely sure without checking. It has two HDMI ports and three 3.2 USB ports, along with an ethernet socket for network and a USB-C port for power. Now Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are available as standard. Now this particular one is running Windows 11, which came pre-installed, so no messing around installing an OS. Now after downloading Spy Server from the AirSpy website, I just uncompressed the archive and then edited the configuration file. Now there isn't much to edit and you can mostly use the default settings. With this test, I'll use the AirSpy Mini, so I'll set the sample rate. I'll then also set the initial frequency of 1.5 gigahertz, and then I'll enable the bias T as we're still gonna be using the Sawbird filter, which has an inbuilt LNA and will be required to be powered. At the dish end, we have the cable coming from the dish connected to the Sawbird filter, and then a run of Formula Zero coax between the filter and the S by Mini, which is located here inside the conservatory connected to one of the USB ports on the Morphine M10 Mini computer. Now using tight VNC server running on the Mini computer, I was then able to take control of it using VNC viewer from the computer in my shack. Now first I started the SPI server by running the executable 
and then over on SDR Sharp, which is running on my local computer, I connect it to the SPI server by typing its IP address into SDR Sharp. Now, once connected, I was able to use this mesh antenna with SDR Sharp from my shack indoors. Now, as mentioned before, the maritime safety messages can take a little time to populate, so I left it running for a couple of hours and managed to capture a whole load of messages. Now, luckily, there were no emergencies happening and it was mostly information sent to vessels about ongoing projects in various parts of the ocean. Now, there's lots to explore on in Marsat, so if this kind of thing tickles your fancy, then give it a go. Now, there are some other experiments that I want to try with this antenna, but if you have any that you would like me to try, then please feel free to let me know down in the comments section. Now, with a wide 200 MHz bandwidth from a center frequency of 1.7 GHz, this covers the range of quite a few different satellites, some which will be accessible and some which won't be, depending on which part of the world you live in. Now, all links to products shown in this video will be in the description if you're interested in checking out more specs or how much it costs in your area. Until the next video, guys, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one.